Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And if you want a very nice camp kitchen complete with a black stone griddle, but you don't want bunks, this might be the one for you. It's just about 11,000 pounds uh, as we see it here today. It's the Eagle 317 RLOK. It's a very cool um, A, B option alternative to the 321 RSTS Eagle. They're very, very similar. And really, it's only like the back quarter of the RV that changes. They flip flop the theater seat and the entertainment center in this one to give us a very respectable uh, camp kitchen without needing to go into a bunkhouse. But basically from there forward, this one and the 321 are the same. So I'd really love it. Take a look at this. As always, let me know what are the things that you like, what are the things that maybe you dislike. And if one of those happens to be, I really would prefer more door side windows. I don't care about a camp kitchen. Definitely, definitely take a look at the 321 RST, uh, RSTS Eagle footage that we have for you. Uh, they they do some really nice high level fifth wheel features like you've got standard now TPMS with those Goodyear tire package built into that J command system, which is my first personal favorite smart system. Basically, it's not like I'm suffering from heat stroke. First, 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 personal, personal, personal. <laughs> De definitely, definitely, definitely sh should should rehearse my lines more. Yeah, Charlie Babbitt. Yeah, get my underwear from Kmart. And we're gonna start a little different today. We're right in the theater seat. This is the point of view. I'm putting you right in the driver's seat as it were over here. You come in, you're, you're taking a look at one of these. You sit down in the theater seat. This is what you're gonna see right here. You got that uh, electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster right there in a totally carpetless slide out. Below the new for 22 extra large 4K television that Jayco standardized across all the Eagles. That's something that a couple other uh, brands were doing like Cougar and Jayco said, you know what? You got us beat on the TV. We don't like that. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> That's really kind of almost Jayco's unofficial model now. Uh, model? Mo motto? Whatever. You get the idea. Uh, slogan <laughs> nowadays is they don't want to have anything uh, like where you could say, well, somebody else has this. And you could say, yeah, well, maybe. Uh, okay. They, they want to have all of the things. And that's really, I think, what Eagle has become. Eagle's become very extra in, in a lot of ways. It's become a, a really serious, like, over-the-top brand right here. And this floor plan is very interesting to me because some floor plans give us windows on the door side, some on the back, some on the driver's side. This gives us very good window coverage and cross-breeze potential all the way through here. Now, I got a lot to cover. I'm gonna try to move as quick as I can. I know my videos run long, but I think if you're serious about buying an RV, you'd appreciate the extra information like the dual 15,000 BTU whisper ducted air. It's whisper quiet, both in the living room and the bedroom, which is one of those nice things. So if you don't like to hear a Katy Perry roar of an air conditioner at night, well, you don't gotta worry about it. They've gone with maximized windows in these. They have sacrificed a little bit of overhead storage in a couple of them but it has given us just a, a bigger, more wide open feel. Now down below you see that uh, wall hugging theater seat, little center armrest uh, console in there, but you've also got that trifold fold hide-a-bed there. And that brings us to another new for 22 feature. They finally got rid of the, uh, the pleated shades here in the Eagle series. I didn't dislike them, but the roller shades that they're doing here, like they were doing in, in North Point and Pinnacle, the other big fancy pants uh, Jayco fifth wheels, it definitely feels right. It feels appropriate. And they do uh, accomplish a better job of blocking the light out of these, I think. Now, um, a couple things I want to point out here, because the storage in this one, the, the bonus storage is broken up a little bit. We're going to start kind of uh, up here above that. I do want to point out this is all pocket screwed, but very few fifth wheels at this budget are not pocket screwed. Over here above the entertainment zone, uh, entertainment center though, there we go. There's a big pocket up there. And just to kind of show you exactly how large that is, I actually took the slip covers off the back of those chairs and slipped them back there. And did you notice how much wide open space was available? Now, just in case you're curious, yes, this TV can pivot. So kind of like I did from the uh, theater seat over here at the rear height of bed sofa, you can also pivot that around. So if you want to sit here and have a cool little game day bucket go boom conversation corner, you're right next to the people over here. You're very social. You can keep the volume down low. You're not yelling across the entire RV to get to talk to the people in the kitchen. 
But we do have uh, an interesting, like, kind of like nicely separated dining arrangement over here with, with the, again, big panoramic windows. You see a, a big window in the actual entry door over there. And uh, a couple things I want to showcase for you right here. This is a couple's rig, first and foremost. But if Uncle Josh and uh, Aunt Aaron, uh, my wife, decided to come over, you see that you can uh, lift that up, you can extend that out. There's a pair of fold-away guest chairs. And I, I really like the update that they put on those. Those are not the same chairs uh, Eagle had been using uh, a couple seasons ago. They will actually stand themselves up, which is a small but I think really important thing to point out here because uh, the, the previous chairs, if you didn't lean them against something, they'd always fall down. And I always hated the idea that, like, if I wasn't just paying a super watchful eye to that, then, uh, you know, they're going to they're, they're gonna fall and bang into something. I want to address something real quick. Eagles have floor vents. It is a more effective heating system. It is uh, one of the major aspects of Jayco's hot, cold camping package. Uh, I, I have done some polls on this channel right here people who have actually owned RVs and used them for cold camping, and it is by far and away the, the more preferred choice there. If you're not interested in cold camping, maybe those aren't a really big feature to you, but at the same time, it's not real hard to just throw a little floor uh, runner rug over those and hide them away if you don't want to worry about stuff going down the vents. Now, I, I always want to be fair. I'm not trying to be argumentative about the floor vents thing. I'm uh, At the time of this filming, I'm breaking my caffeine habit. By the time this comes out, I'll probably be past that. But I kind of thought, I'm like, listen, did that come across a little bit more aggressive than you meant to? And I'm not sure if it did or not, but I wanted to explain. We're family-owned and operated. Um, I, I, I'm not trying to argue. I'm trying to share. I'm trying to inform. I want to earn your business. And we'd like to be able to earn referral business from happy clients. And to do that, we need to make sure you're getting the correct RV. If things like those floor vents, uh, because yes, can, can can little bits of debris and stuff fall down in those? Sure. Are you okay with maybe sweeping them out every now and then? Are you okay with just putting something over the top of them? Are they a deal breaker to you? Would you rather not worry about it? Those aren't things for me to answer. Those are things for you to answer. I simply want to pose the question so that you can get the right answers. If you like this layout, but you're like, floor vents are an immediate disqualifier for me, maybe look at something like a 3550 Arctic Wolf. No vents in the flooring. You know. Each RV is going to have its own advantages and disadvantages. That's why there's so many trailers out there. That's why we carry so many brands. And I'm just trying to do my part to make sure you're getting the right one for you. Let's crack the kitchen. Now remember the one we're looking at today has the gas electric two-way fridge. There uh, is also a residential refrigerator option available in these. Um, in the past, we had not been real sweet on residential refrigerators at Halet RV due to their uh, service records. But that, uh, we found, has been largely based on the suppliers that were available during uh, that time. Like, Jayco since switched over to Whirlpool, and we have seen far, far better service records as a result. So, keep in mind, what we're looking at here might be different from what we have in stock. Now, on the left, great pantry space, right? But notice how uh, there's little metal racks in there. Those are completely adjustable shelves. Speaking of which, watch the shelf in the big right-hand uh, closet pantry space over here. That's called the Mervin shelf. It converts the area, you know, from pantry to closet, or a closet, as I am uh, likely to end up ca uh, calling it. Now, the uh, two-way fridge does get us uh, a little extra drawer right here. It is physically just slightly smaller in terms of uh, physical dimensions. Although, no matter what, you're always going to get the nice drawer space down there below that larger Furion oven, and uh, up here, this is another new for 22 update. They have gone to a new larger microwave, which is something I think a lot of people are gonna be really happy to see because the previous microwave in this was a little small. Now, I, I try to be fair. I point out things to consider or potential points of concern as we go. I have heard from a lot of people and I recognize and I acknowledge, and that's why I'm sharing. They don't like the idea necessarily of the, uh, the sofa being so darn close to the countertop and stuff. I think that's probably why they put the stove over here all the way to the right. I don't think it would be really hard to maybe add a little vertical splash guard fin or something like that right there. But I would really like to hear from people who have a model like this, whether it's a Jayco or something else. Is that a theoretical problem or more of a practical one? Then over here in the island, it's uh, all the kitchen counters in this are solid surface, by the way. You see the pop-up power tower on the left, giving us a little bit of phone charge in action, or maybe firing up the electric griddle when you need it. 
The countertop is also slightly asymmetrical, which is allows uh, what allows them basically to have that extra drawer space over there. Since, you know, where the sink is located, it's uh, a little difficult to have drawers. I also want to point out this little mini faucet over here. That is the Jayco uh, drinking water system. If you look down here, basically there's effectively a five gallon Culligan jug that you can refill for like pennies on the dollar compared to bottled water. And if you look at the equivalent amount of bottled water, the, uh, how much money you'd have to spend to fill that jug, it's insane how less expensive that is. And it's, it's one of those things that now you don't have to lug around extra bottles the entire time. And that door was just kind of in the way. That's the only trick with this island. Like when you're using it, it makes tons of sense. But on camera, it's hard to get over here into all those individual little nooks and crannies. Now, as we've gone through the RV, you might have noticed a couple of these little button panels over here. If you're not familiar, these are little remote control units that talk to the, the central nervous system of the RV, as it were, the BM Pro system. They're all context sensitive. So over here by the dining, I can turn on the ceiling lights, just the lights, the pendant lights above the kitchen, the dining lights are all the outside lights because this side of the RV is over here facing the exterior. Each one of those panels will have four to six different buttons on them, uh, depending on where it is in the RV. And what they all do, and what this thing does, this is your temperature sensor, by the way, they all talk to this guy, the BM Pro J Command Center over here. This is my personal favorite smart system out there. It does basically everything I've ever seen any other one ever do. I feel like it does it more smoothly, but not, not just the fact that you can control your climate controls, your, your like, say your, your slide motors or your automatic leveling, you can do all of that right here. I love the fact that you don't have to do all the touch screen uh, mojo. You don't have to Bluetooth your phone to it. I want to run awning one, awning two, slide one, two, three, uh, the, the jacks, stuff like that. I can do that stuff from here. And I can also control the lights from here. So even though it is a like touch command smart panel, you don't have to use it. You can, you just still have buttons, which nice, right? Now the bathroom layout hasn't changed. A couple of the looks have though. You still have that really nice linen space there. I love the shelving. You got the pair of drunken octopus fight club uh, towel hangers over here. There's only one rule in drunken octopus fight club. You don't talk about drunken octopus fight club. <laughs> anyway, now the, uh, the toilet space over here, porcelain foot flush. Excellent, excellent leg room as you can see. But if I pivot the camera around, I think you'll find this is also pretty fluffy friendly. There's a lot of room on both sides of it here, especially when the uh, when you close the uh, um, linen door right there, you'll, you'll have a lot more space. Now, as I, I get you up top here, and I'm trying to move slow, trying to avoid making you motion sick, you see a different looking fan. This is a Max Air vent fan. Um, it is a, uh, it has a special housing on the roof that will help block the rain. So uh, if you wanna make sure that after you take a hot shower, You've got plenty of uh, you know airflow to steam this thing out, or um, let's say you just returned from a chili con carne cook-off and you need to visit the facilities for an undisclosed amount of time, and you may want to air things out a little bit. Have you noticed how they went to a totally uh, clear shower door and a new shower surround paneling though? It gives it, it makes the whole room look and feel bigger. I think it ties the inside and the outside together very nicely. And I'd love your feedback on this. This is very interesting to me. The, uh, the the navel blue accents here, like that's a backlit morning mirror. Um, the uh, the countertop down here below that, you also see that, that single navel blue cabinet color pattern right here. Is that a nailed it or is that a failed it? I, I kind of like it. And one other thing I want to point out, like this is always what the bathroom looks like. And you'll see the, the bedroom will never change. The decors, when you choose them, only the living room changes. Only really just the kitchen changes. You've seen it from the theater seat. You've seen it from the sofa. Now see it like never before from the headboard of the bed. I think I missed my calling maybe as a, uh, like a over-exaggerated, uh, you know, movie trailer voiceover guy. I could work on it a little bit. Anyway, over here, a couple things. Remember, you got those little contact sensitive, like this one does some slides, it does the ceiling and the hallway lights, and you have a separate thermal sensor right here because this RV does have a uh, dual whisper air. So that actually will, the, the air conditioners can operate independently. Um, what's kind of nice about that is like, let's say 
your um you know the 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 front of the rv is facing the sun well the bedroom is going to get warmer than the living room or vice versa so both of the air conditioners tie into the same central air ducting system but they can each operate when and if they need to or obviously they can operate together if need be now you saw down below the bed there's full storage there that is a great place uh, uh, for a mother-in-law suite. Um, or, uh, I mean, I guess you could put your fold-away guest chairs down there. I don't know. That's weird, right? I guess some people would do that. Or you could put them in the closet. You can put them on the burn pile uh, a a after after you buy the RV, not before, please. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, you won't hear the Katy Perry roar when the air conditioner compressor kicks on, as long as we're talking about the AC. Let's point out the fact that Jayco's air system is vented and louvered on every duct. What that means is that every vent can open and close. And I'm not sure what that is, but we're going to have to sweep that up in just a little bit here. Headroom height. Uh, you saw me the picture of me standing in the shower there. This has about a six and a half foot or something like that upper deck. Like you can see my hand way above my head here. Um, it's, it's pretty comfortable. There's a lot of space up there. Very comfortable to walk around. So you say, yeah, but I noticed the roof tapers a little bit when you get to the front. Blah, blah, blah. And the answer is it's fine. I'm still not hitting my head, even if I do an ET phone home neck stretch. Elliot. Ouch. And a quick look here with the slides closed. Um, like most fifth wheels, you kind of got to army crawl over the bed if you want to get to the front closet, but that's pretty standard. With the bathroom being over here by the hallway, you know, getting to the uh, toilet in, uh, you know, emergency roadside mode, no big deal. The big question becomes what happens when we get downstairs? And you can't really access much, but I think you can access the most important thing. Uh, you can get to the lion's share of the refrigerator and the freezer. Now, your accessibility here may vary a little bit, whether you're looking at the residential fridge or the uh, gas electric two-way fridge with the four doors. This one allows a little bit better traveling access, but the uh, residential fridge is not completely, completely blocked off. Now, I, I tell you, I really, I really like the look of these. I love the look of that platinum kind of taupe-ish generation of eagles before this, the Silver Eagle series. But when they went, you know, that just the, the high contrast exterior like this, it just really sparked it up a notch for me. Now, if you notice up here, there's a lot of room in that front compartment. You can stuff up to four batteries on the right side, and it is uh, the space there is generator capable. Their uh, Eagle does offer a, uh, uh, I think they just call it like an off-grid package where they add an extra 30 pound propane tank and generator prep the RV. Weirdly, there is no factory generator option for Eagles. Just always seems odd to me. We are auto leveling. We are uh, slide awning prepped. And over here, this is going to be kind of the, uh, the first peek at a couple things. First of all, we have an enclosed, heated, privatized, uh, protected docking center. All of our gate valves and everything are enclosed and heated and protected. Um, Eagles are and have been zero to 100 degree rated for many, many consecutive seasons now. Actually, Jayco is one of the very first, uh, and as far as I know, still one of the very best in terms of published, proven testing data in their cold camp capability. And did you notice the extra little sewer hose tube right there? That is a new for 22 feature. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing because it's something you're going to use every trip and you no longer need to worry about putting your sewer stuff up here in this newly expanded pass-through compartment. Look at that monstrosity. Holy cow, that's big. And this was actually one of the updates for the 22s I was most excited about on the Big Bird Eagle series as opposed to HT. I call these Big Birds. <laughs> um, now this over here, you might be going, oh, I got some sunlight in her face. There you go. You might be going, what is that thing? That is the uh, mounting platform and mounting arm for the Blackstone griddle that is included with this RV. You just simply won't see it in this video because unfortunately they are currently in shortage at this time, but no worries. Uh, if you happen to purchase an RV, uh, a Jayco RV that includes a Blackstone, but they're short, Blackstone themselves will send it straight to you as soon as they're available. TV hookups there, motion lighting. Uh, so that if, you know, you're doing shadow puppets outside, you can cast a shadow across your campsite by doing those puppets. And you see that it is all prepped and ready for a charge controller right there. Uh, Jayco Fifth Wheels, all the Eagles have been uh, uh, solar prepped and ready for many, many seasons now. Now take a look at those steps. This is a good, like, uh, oh, you've got stable steps? Yeah, well, hold my beer. First of all, 
I'm gonna put a bigger grab handle on it. Then, I'm gonna make these steps literally defy gravity. <laughs> and again, this is that luxury fifth wheel feature in a mid-size fifth wheel. Although, mid-size fifth wheels are getting pretty darn big. I don't know that there's much of a clear definition of big versus little size fifth wheels. Uh, now, over here, we've got our Goodyear Endurance radial package. That's that's standard. The More Ride uh, suspension shock dampening package, that's standard. And also something that used to be optional and is now standard is the inclusion of the TPMS system into the J-Command. So you have uh, integrated tire pressure monitoring already included on this RV. Now, before we get to the camp kitchen, first of all, I wanted to back way up to really showcase something. The fact that you have two awnings. That is not something this floor plan always used to have, and I really used to feel like it was one of its big potential deficits. Well, evidently, Jayco did too, because they re-engineered the slide a little bit, made room for uh, kind of shift and wiggled, shiggled things over just a little bit. That's a nerdism number 37 right there, to make room for a second awning while still maintaining the outdoor little camp kitchen convenience center, little outdoor entertainment hookups there. We've got a, you know, now we got fridge inside, fridge outside. I want to be clear. That refrigerator, uh, re oh man, heat stroke. That refrigerator right there uh, is 110 only. The fridge inside on this RV is gas and electric. Now, uh, if you get uh, one of these with the standard uh, residential refrigerator, it has a 1200 watt inverter. That inverter will run two outlets in the bedroom, it will power both TVs, and it will uh, be hooked up to both refrigerators. So with the residential refrigerator, that outside fridge will operate in transit, which is a very cool fine detail that not every manufacturer nails very well. Now, if you're looking over here, you've got a drawer, you got a fridge, you got some storage, but remember, this is where in the J port, in the two inch receiver hitch off the side here, which is also perfect for a bumper dumper in case you want to put on a uh, show for the neighbors. And if you need to, this one is double bumper dumper compliant. Folks, tell me another RV in the industry capable of double bumper dumperage. I just don't know if there is one outside of another Jayco anyway. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the hitch on the back, uh, that is not just a, a bumper dumper bike rack accessory hitch. It is a full on towing hitch. Eagle was the first in this class to standardize that, uh, starting with the HTs. But it's got a 3,000 pound towing limit, 300 pound tongue limit, safety chain hooks, four way wiring harness. And as we back up, take a look at the taillights. You see the white elements in there. Just like seeing the whites in their eyes, you know, when you're in battle. I don't know, I, it, just, it just came out. Um, <coughs> that is the uh, backup lighting, and which is one of the aspects of the J Smart Lighting. Uh, signals, markers, and reverse travel. Uh, I think it might be safety markers. I call it signals markers. I don't know, they both make sense. But let's say you flip on your left-hand turn signal. All of the lights down the side of the RV are going to blink along with your turn signal, which is a safety aspect kind of thing that just most brands don't do. And speaking of safety, by the way, think about this. You've got better tires you've got uh turn signal lighting and we are both back and side camera prepped and ready plus tpms there's a lot of tow safety factors going on here and it's a good thing that's a 250 pound rated ladder because uh i gotta get to lose weight otherwise i might be uh over the gvw of a couple of these ladders here <laughs> Now, um, if you're not familiar, if you've never been on top of a Jayco before, uh, I don't know who else really gets you on top of RVs like we do at Halitz, but this has what they call their Magnum Truss Roof System. Little thicker roof trusses, bigger nail plates that hold them together, and it's plywood decking instead of OSB, which is what it, ab about 99% of the rest of the industry uses. And there's nothing wrong with an OSB roof deck. It's perfectly walkable but the plywood roof decking can support more weight. Now you notice over here on the right, that is our prep plug for the solar package. You can get either 190 or 380 watt uh, double panel package straight from Jayco. And these little white hockey pucks, you notice how it's got an, the RV has an all white skin and uh, that will help shed some uh, heat organically. Those right there are letting the heat in the RV's uh, ceiling construction attic space breathe out. Now, I mentioned a different kind of fan in the bathroom. It's a Max Air uh, fan. It's got this interesting little cover right here, but again, it has that, uh, you can open and close it from the inside to really keep the, uh, uh, the, 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 the heat and humidity out when you need to. Now, 
I try to be fair, and I would love your input on this. I know why they're using black AC shrouds, because it looks freaking cool from the ground level. I get that. Is the black AC shroud going to be the make or break difference between me sweating to the oldies or uh, freezing my little piggies off when I'm camping? No. I would prefer it personally to be a white AC shroud just because I think it would operate a little more efficiently. I've seen brands like Cougar in Montana do that. They have sacrificed a little bit of fashion for a little bit of function. And I tend to be more of a function versus a fashion person, but I'm not the one buying this. What would you want if you were buying it? And folks, I mean, if a white AC shroud versus a black AC shroud, if that is the make or break difference to you, you call our people over here at Halid RV. We'll get you in touch in that parts and service center right over there. We can get those swapped out. That is just not something that should really be stopping you. I just was curious about some feedback. I've seen some other manufacturers do it. I like the idea of the white shroud, but that's just me. And again, if you have the opportunity, do me a favor, I'll leave you a link to the 321 Eagle footage in the video description. I would really like it if you compared one against the other. Let me know which one you prefer, why, what one would you go with, like what other questions do you have, is there something you like, dislike, all that kind of stuff. Let me know. I love hearing from you guys. You really keep me going. And if we're doing a good job, it's okay to let us know that too. And if there's something I can do better, it's okay to let us know that too. I leave you a link uh, in the video description for pricing and availability so you can always see current pricing, not just what the pricing happen to be right now because it has been changing violently for the manufacturers lately. And that's the only way it can always get you current pricing. Not to mention, you can always see what we have in stock and maybe we have one in Craftsman. We've got this one here in Farmhouse. Who knows what we'll have tomorrow. So as always, remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else, and occasionally I do a Rain Man impression. Get my outerwear from Kmart. Charlie Babbitt. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. I'm going to go get a drink and cool down. <laughs>